Cheers. How much do you think of this? One big drink. Mm. Big good, it. huh? <laughs> And on the side of the companies with a whip from our Shulanchis and three fish knives. Awesome. And that's free, man. I guess I'm going to have to have some carbs today. Yeah. A little bit of sponge cake. Oh no, what do you think? You like it now? I'm up in there. This is this normal at a Michelin star? Chip crystal. The serveware. It's actually a pretty big chip, it's hard to see. It's right here. Welcome invites from the chef. Welcome you all to the restaurant. Awesome. It's gonna be our house made ginger and pineapple from which we make in the house. And it's resting on a coconut snow, something refreshing to awaken your palate. And next up, here for both of you, you will be enjoying two beautiful patafuis. So the one that's resting on that citrus is gonna be last word, like the cocktail, bon bon patafuis, covered with a white chocolate shell and mint powder. The one next to it is a mezcal and tarragon pate free with uh, cherry jam and sea salts. Everything here is finger food, no particular order. And by the way, I um, only brought here these two because they contain alcohol. But we got more coming up. And up next on the red plate, you have a local ramp and potato panis topped with a cream herb aioli. And on the black rocks, you have a mushroom s'mores with a cocoa hush puppy. And it's topped with a porcini meringue. And like any classic s'mores, we get a, a nice voice so we can release all those flavors and aromas. Yeah. All right, now for this thing. Oh, wow. No chocolate around it. Mm. Over this gelatin thing. See, it's alcoholic. Alright, ready for dinner. Which, um, which one do you like better? Mm, I think the second. Because it kind of tasted like a marshmallow. It yeah, did, yeah. Hot. Yep. That was good. Wait, was it a marshmallow on top? Oh, sort of, yeah, sort of. I gave her a small list, and I just, we get started with wine pairing. Hey, madam, enjoy our classic pairing. We've got some little of a caramel, or champagne, or la niña For you, uh, we don't actually have any wine for you to get started with. We probably do a little sake. All right, there uh, you go. You all five, made by one of the Tim producer winemakers from Dom Perignon. I uh, wanted to revolutionize the sake industry, uh, so I started making sake in Japan. Uh, the same way that you'd make sake or champagne, uh, by taking individual grains and waters from different prefectures and blending them together to make a house style, uh, rather than something more representative of the region. So, awesome. Yeah, friends. Cheers and cool. Thank you. Not really a sake guy, but this... This isn't bad. Let's see how it is with the course. It's like a well planned orchestra here. Is that Shishan the country's plan? Did we have a Pograte wing? I have layers of country pate, honey pot sugar, and on the side, add butter bread so they can spread the foreground bread. Yeah. And then the aged gelato kingfish crudo here with avocado puree. There's some local fermented butter, little powder from that. And with my colleague, we'll finish it here with some citrus escabeche. 
And on the side, we have some acorn crackers for the cabbage. And after you, we have a yucca cracker, gluten free. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so I have this little salad thing we do with the cracker. <laughs> Phenomenal. All right. Try a little full grog, camera. That stuff? No, right here. Mm -hmm. A little bit more. I like it. You do? Is it better mm. than liver sausage? I like it on bread more than plain. You like it on the bread? something extra the chef likes to squeeze in there for enjoying the tasting so starting with the black plate it's a marinated snappy taco so the one on the right madame is only for you for the gluten allergy and you also have a carrot crepe trout roll and lime juice and right up next to it it's a marinated hawaiian red crab stuffed with a ricotta cheese on a squash blossom and tempura style and it's garnished on top with a ginger cocktail sauce Good. All right, let's see what you think. I'm gonna share with you. What do you think? Tastes like a cracker. Tastes like a cracker. It's good. You want more? Yeah. What are these little thingies? Like little orbs. Fish eggs. Tastes like regular salsa. Yeah, she goes to the taste dentist. Do you want you one? And here we go, sir. One of our beautiful Paul Blanc here. Pinot you know, Gris. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, those do look very good, see? I'm interested to see what this next course is. Oh, we get our foie gras. Some foie gras to land, yes. So it's basically like the foie gras. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we, so we don't get a foie gras to land. Be careful. Let's see, thank you. So for the following course, we got a foie gras to land. On this side, we got with uh, gluten. There's a little bit on the other side, it's going to be a portugal bars and mandarin habanero place and a little bit of good topic. Okay. For you, sir, everything is in addition on yours, we had a gratarine and layers as well as contrapace with house-made butter bread. Thank you. Enjoy. All right, here we go, a little foie gras, put it all in one piece of bread. <laughs> Ridiculous. Excuse me, I forgot to cleanse my palate before that. I'm gonna do it again. It's not bad. Um, I've had better foie gras. I mean, Anthony's Prime at the Emory's in Las Vegas blew that away. Not even close. It's all right. I think they tried too hard on it. Wow. What do you think of this? Straight up duck breast. Good. Like that or this stuff, please. They'll let you know. So this is the grilled Australian A7 YU strip steak. Local marble potatoes, I'll be here.
So here we are going to try you how to stop too many mushrooms as well as uh, taro and kurabi will be done. This is a two week aged duck breast with toasted pistachio, scallion cheddar cornbread, and miso cherry jam. It's finished with a it's toasted pistachio. Okay. And it's finished with a um, duck juice. Let's enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you ready for this? So talk to me. You got duck breast. What are you thinking? Talk about it. It tastes really good. Do you like the sauce on it? Yeah. How about the pistachio stuff on the side? It's all good. All right. This is the duck skin. Tell me what you think of that. Good. How much flavor does that have? Mm, not too much. But You're right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. There's so much. It explodes in your mouth when you chew it. You don't think so? Thank you. And you hear. Thank you, Madam. We brought you a beautiful Chenin Blanc from the Loire Valley in the Hunger Down there. Uh, they can be doing sometimes in an off dry style. This is very dry. This is even with a neutral oak, so it does have a very rounded and uh, fuller body to it. This is a champagne. You get the bubbles in somewhere here. Uh, extra brute. Pretty, pretty traditional blend of the three grapes. Awesome. Thank you. What do we got here? This is uh, sturgeon and sour bread tart. It's um, Ooh, one of the sturgeon. chef's most iconic dishes. Okay. It's served with salion, it's a little bit caviar, and it's infused with some um, apple juice smoke. Ooh. Thank you. What number is this? Four? It's uh, sturgeon. What, what number of course is this? Four? It's uh, four. Four? four. four. This is uh, course number four. four. Thank you. Number four. Yeah. All right, so the sturgeon is one of my favorite dishes. Have you guys had sturgeon before? Just think of this archaic dinosaur fish. And that's what it is. It's a white fish, though. Let me show you guys. That's what it is. It's so meaty. Inside of a flaky pastry with the caviar. It's phenomenal. Huge fan of this. I forgot to mention one of the best parts of this sauerkraut. Rubens are my favorite. I would have never guessed sauerkraut, caviar, sturgeon, pastry go so well together. You gotta try this. Hot, a beautiful Gruner Vetliner from Austria, from the Bagram region. Uh, you can have all those beautiful underlying notes of white peppercorn, a little later harvest, so a little more rounder rich. Thank you. Here's inside is the Alsatian white asparagus, cooked in combo and clay. Uh, it's being steamed here for at least 25 minutes, or 30. So we got to um, break, got to break the shell. Yep. Put on the plate. Sorry, buddy. And bring it to you. So we got to do some deconstruction work in here. Okay. See ya. So. It's being, you know, with the seaweed, we give, we give all the touch of the sweetness because you know the Alsatian asparagus that 
No, because they are a little bit bitter, but because we cooked in the combo, which is the seaweed and a little touch of butter. Open, I want to show you, present you, so that you can take a look, picture, and smell, actually. So what is this again? Asparagus. The asparagus, the ocean oh. white asparagus. Wow. So this is an entire course. This is the one of the courses. Yes. Awesome. Cleanse my palate. White asparagus with this amazing golden caviar. Wash it down with a little bit of asparagus creme brulee. First time I've ever had that. I'm assuming the creme brulee is supposed to be a little chilly. It's good. It's different, but it's really good. All right, boss, you ready for this? White asparagus with golden caviar. Don't lick it off. Asparagus, but I don't like the caviar. You can't even taste it. All right, try this now. This is asparagus creme brulee. You've done a good job tonight. I'll give it credit. Yeah, some of our beautiful Trimbach Pinot Noir, the reserve personnel from 2015. Uh, Trimbach being one of the oldest families uh, in Alsace since 1639, uh, making the only red grape allowed in Alsace, which is Pinot Noir. So. Thank you. Right. So, up next, we will be enjoying a classic uh, dish from Chef Garbo. So, this is a Alsatian red cabbage chucrute, their house-made sausage, purslane pork belly, and potato stuffed with uh, bento's bacon and pontina cheese. I'll be playing your dish. This dish uh, reminds of Chef Gabriel when he was young. His mom used to cook uh, this classic dish when he was young. Yeah, beautiful memory. And he likes to uh, show place. But of course, more elevated and rich. Because back in Alsace, they're really bulky with their meats and sauerkraut, of course. And I'll be garnishing a beautiful dish. Mustard and red wine. All right, so this Pinot is ridiculous. I just got it on my shirt. is not like a normal Pinot. Very hard to explain. This is, the dish is good. It reminds me of something I get at Mater's in Milwaukee. I like the presentation. I like the wine, it's sort of blah. I don't know. So let's go on. So for your final course this evening, we brought you for your main uh, beautiful red wine here. Chateau de Capop, yes. So a little bit uh, bigger and bolder in tannins, definitely compared to the Pinot Noirs from 2019 uh, from Pine Avenue. So here we are. 
So how does this compare to Chateau de Beaucastel? Chateau de Beaucastel. So Beaucastel uses uh, pretty much all of the grapes that you're allowed to blend into Chateau de Pop, uh, whereas Pernambuco just uses uh, Grenache pretty much almost exclusively. So they're not going to sense that they'll differ. I find this to be a little bit softer in tannins. The Beaucastel a little bit stronger. So have you seen um, have you seen the pronunciation things on Google online? Pronunciation? Yeah, where like if you don't know how to pronounce something, you can type oh, it in Google and then they'll help you out with it, right? Have okay. you seen that? I have. Okay, I'm gonna show you something. You're gonna die. <laughs> All right. You're gonna All die right. over that. Oh, okay. Uh, welcome around. Here. Hey, sir. Pop as well. But this is uh, made by Moise de Bois Lazon, their Cuvée de In 04. And this is from 2004, so you'll definitely be able to taste a little bit more of that age coming through, a little more of the tertiary flavors. Yep. Uh, Straight less. barnyard here or not? Uh, so there's a bit of life left. So. All right. So what's the price point on this one? I haven't heard of this one. This one, I believe, on our list goes for... Uh, I'll say about 350. 350? So I've got back to 1978 Chateau de Bogues Hestel. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I've got 04 in a Magnum of, of that as well. So. Looking forward to it. All right. All right. Wonderful. So we made it. Let's see what we have here. 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 Let's see you also have a grilled asparagus. On the shrimp, you have a miso sherry jam with pistachio puree. And I'll be going on top with a red wine duck and a choju. So they grab all the trims. You add red wine and they reduce this beautiful gravy. Thank you.